we're analyzing CrowdStrike Holdings stock ticker CRWD to see if CrowdStrike is a great business on sale. This video is just over a 10 minute analysis. It's gonna be intense, but it's gonna be worth it. We're using the select six analysis to look at the most telling financial metrics before estimating a fair value for CrowdStrike. Then we're giving a final rating to the business. Before we get into these valuable metrics, let's understand CrowdStrike stock performance. Right now, CrowdStrike Holdings trades for $141.81 per share. Year to date, their stock is crushing it. Their stock price is up 37%. This is beating the average company in the market. CrowdStrike was publicly listed just four years ago. In that time, their stock price is up 91%. They're compounding at 17.5% annually. That's even with CrowdStrike being cut in half from their highs in October of 2021. CrowdStrike trades $60 below their 52-week high. It trades $50 above their 52-week lows. CrowdStrike is a big business. They have a $34 billion market cap. But the burning question is, why should we be paying close attention to CrowdStrike? CrowdStrike is a cloud-based cybersecurity company specializing in next-generation endpoint and cloud workload protection. CrowdStrike's primary offering is its Falcon platform that offers a proverbial single pane of glass for an enterprise to detect and respond to security threats attacking its IT infrastructure. The Texas-based firm was founded in 2011 and went public in 2019. With that understanding of CrowdStrike, let's get into the numbers. Starting with metric number one, we want their average return on capital in the last five years to be above 14%. CrowdStrike has only been listed for four years, so we're going to be looking at their numbers since then. In this time, their returns on capital are negative in all of these years. Much of this has to do with how the accounting is done for the business. CrowdStrike has negative earnings, which affect how this is calculated. We can compensate for this by looking at their free cash flows more closely later in our analysis. This is an X on metric number one. Metric number two, we're looking for growth. We want to see growth in their revenues, net incomes, and free cash flows. CrowdStrike has had insane growth in this time. Their revenues are up more than 10 times. We already learned their net incomes have been negative in all five of these years. We won't actually be counting this against the business like we we typically would. CrowdStrike has also grown their free cash flows in each and every year over this time, taking them from being negative in 2019 before they were listed to positive today. Well, not what we usually do. We're going to give this to CrowdStrike. This is a check on metric number two. Metric number three, we typically look for earnings per share growth in the last five years. Because of CrowdStrike's unique situation, we're going to be looking at their shares outstanding primarily. We'd want to see these shares outstanding decreasing. That has not been the case. The company was listed in 2019, which was incorporated here in their fiscal 2020. Since 2021, CrowdStrike has continued to dilute shareholders. They've diluted shareholders by 8%, meaning with negative earnings and shareholder dilution, this is an X on metric number three. Metric number four, we're looking for free cash flow per share growth. CrowdStrike's free cash flows have gone from being negative to positive. They've grown a lot from a very small base. This is a check on metric number four, as CrowdStrike has grown their free cash flows per share. To give a recap, CrowdStrike split evenly. They have two checks and two X's through four metrics. During recessions, it's overly levered businesses that are at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. Metric number five, we want CrowdStrike's net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the sum of their free cash flows in the last five years. CrowdStrike has had negative net debt in all five of these years. They have cash left over after paying off all their debt. They ended their last fiscal year with $1.9 billion in cash. Currently, they have $2.1 billion. At the same time, CrowdStrike's generated $1.4 billion in free cash flow. With a strong cash position on their balance sheet and the business generating free cash flow, this is a big check on metric number five. CrowdStrike seems to be in a healthy financial position. Now let's get into our valuation methods. The big metric of them all, metric number six, we want CrowdStrike's average free cash flow to their enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this gives a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury, Warren Buffett's preferred benchmark. It's the first of two different ways we're using to estimate a fair value for CrowdStrike. Right now, CrowdStrike has a $32 billion enterprise value. This looks at the business similar to it being a private company. It accounts for their market cap and their net debt position. CrowdStrike's produced $1.4 billion of free cash flow in their last four years. Since going public, this means they produce $350 million of free cash flow in an average year. When that's divided by their $32 billion enterprise value, we get about a 1% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. On a current basis, 
CrowdStrike's produced $782 million of free cash flow in their last 12 months. When that's divided by their $32 billion enterprise value, it gives us a 2.4% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. Both of these are coming in below the yield of the 10-year treasury, meaning they're also below the risk premium we'd be seeking. Coming in on metric number six, this is an X for CrowdStrike. Don't just throw this business out. We still need to estimate their fair value per share and project this growth into the future. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze CrowdStrike, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to estimate their fair value per share. A DCF model is based off the predictability of a company's free cash flows. Like any model in any discipline, its outputs are sensitive to its inputs. CrowdStrike has a very short track record as a public business. The company itself is just over a decade old. They've also grown very quickly in their past. Their business predictability is extremely low. We're taking an average of their last three fiscal years worth of free cash flows, then using assumptions to grow these into the future. It's up to you to figure out if these will be accurate or not for CrowdStrike. Assuming they grow their three-year free cash flows at a rate of 20% annually for the next 10 years, then in the following decade, assuming this growth rate is cut in half and that these grow at 10% annually, then if we add in their tangible book value, which gives an estimate of their net worth, if we're seeking a 15% rate of return, which is what Warren Buffett's looking for in addition to his margin of safety requirements, from today's valuations of CrowdStrike, an estimate of their fair value per share is around $65.5. That's less than half of their current stock price. It's down about $30 from their 52-week lows. There are key points to keep in mind. The lack of a track record makes this much more of a rough estimate than some other businesses that have been public for a lot longer. These assumptions could either be generous or shortchanging the business. Most importantly, this analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. There's one thing to like about CrowdStrike, which is that compared to many of its peers who were listed around the same time, the business is cash flow positive and has been for its public history. In just a minute, we'll give our final rating to CrowdStrike, but we have to address something first. We've covered the numbers, but the qualitative factors of this business may be even more important. What are they? Looking at the factors supporting a potential long thesis, number one, the company stands to benefit as clients consolidate vendors and opt for a platform-based cybersecurity approach. Number two, CrowdStrike has market leadership and endpoint security and has high enterprise penetration within the space. Number three, CrowdStrike has strong secular tailwinds given that the endpoint security market is projected to grow rapidly. We want to give a balanced perspective, so let's cover the negatives for the business as well. Looking at the factors supporting a potential short thesis, number one, there always remains a risk that CrowdStrike may miss out on the next big technology, thereby allowing its competitors to catch up. Number two, CrowdStrike faces competition from vendors like Palo Alto that have increasingly made investments in the endpoint security space. Number three, large public cloud vendors often offer their own cybersecurity solutions, which could hamper CrowdStrike's growth opportunities. There you have it for a balanced perspective of some of the qualitative factors of the business. Now it's time to give our final rating. In analyzing CrowdStrike Holdings, stock ticker CRWD, we learned they've grown their revenues and their free cash flows very rapidly since becoming a public business. Their earnings have been negative over this time due to the nature of their accounting, which shows their returns on capital as being negative as well. CrowdStrike seems to be in a healthy financial position, both with a cash cushion on their balance sheet and generating free cash flows. They've continued to dilute shareholders since their IPO. They also operate in a very fast-growing industry. It's worth reiterating this analysis is not financial advice. CrowdStrike's free cash flow to enterprise value yields don't look attractive compared to the yield of the 10-year treasury. When we performed our discounted cash flow analysis, from today's valuations based on those assumptions, if you want a 15% rate of return, an estimate of CrowdStrike's fair value per share is around $65.5. Again, that's down $80 from the company's current stock price. CrowdStrike last traded at those levels in April of 2020. Looking at all the factors of our analysis, CrowdStrike looks like a moderate candidate for further research. They're a very fast-growing business, so our estimates are pretty rough here. You'd want to have some special insight into the company. You need to have some you want to have a special insight into the company to really decide this one way or the other. Again, this is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. Consult with your financial advisor before making any investment decision. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, share your thoughts about CrowdStrike, and let me know what business to look at next in the comments below. Thanks for learning about CrowdStrike with me, and have a great day.